Hello Knitters, Faye Lynn from Strand Knitting Studio in San Clemente, California. Today I have classes and I have a tutorial. Stay tuned. On Janu uh, June 29th, which is a Saturday, is the crocheted pot holder and the crocheted handbag. So the pot holder, this is a very beginning, um, very beginning crochet project. If you know how to do your single crochets and stuff, you can do this. And it's, but it's a really good pot holder. You can make them bigger easily. It's two-sided. It works really, really well. Um, yeah, this is really good. Good gifting. Very, very good gifting. So this class is on the 29th from 10 to 12. And then from 12 to 2 on the same day is the hexagon bag, which is a six-sided um, granny square. So it's a six-sided granny square, and it's a great bag. You will need to know how to double crochet and single crochet for this one, but if you can do one, you usually can do the other. Um, they're not much different. So this class is from 12 to 2. So you can take both classes. You can take one or the other class. It's just the book, they're like boom, boom into this class. So um, this is a coastal cotton. Uh, obviously you just need partial of something. <laughs> this one, you need one of each color. Yeah, you need one skein of each color if you do three colors. But if you don't do three colors, you'd probably get away with two skeins with um, if it were solid or something. Cause I had, I had no gray left, but I had these left over. So you probably get away with two skeins of the coastal cotton, um, but three skeins if you have this. And then I had leftover for this and I had leftover for this. So, I, and I still think I had a little bit leftover. So that's what came out of these two skeins. All right, so that class is on the 29th between 12 and two. The next class is in July already, July 7th. And this is, that's gonna be the Floodlight Tea with our Diversa yarns. Now you don't have to stripe this much. You can just stripe just the top part if you want to. You don't have to stripe it all. It can be all solid. Um, and the cute thing about this is the keyhole in the back. It's very cute. And here's the other version that Christine knit up. And this is out of Dream, which is this here, and a mohair. See that? That's really beautiful too. Very beautiful. And again, you've got your keyhole in the back. Yep. So those are options. There's tons of options with this. <laughs> so that's the Floodlight Tea, and that will be on July 7th, July 7th, at from 10 to 12. So that's a Sunday from 10 to 12. Then last week I told you Chicken Mania was gonna start in July. Uh, I think it's already started. So here's our original chicken. It's already grown. Now we have two chickens. This one's mine. Oops, he's all tagged up here. So here's the one I just finished. And this, the, the yarn did the striping. I didn't do, that's why, you know, yeah. The yarn did the striping, except for like the aqua color and the yellow color, obviously. But all the other colors, that was just the way it striped. This is if you use solids. And there's a third one on the way. <laughs> it's about to be birthed, I think. It'll be birthed pretty quick. So I'm doing a little one and I'm using fingering weight yarn. And so this is, see, this is what it looks like flat. So you can see this is gonna be much littler. So these are like the little tail here and that's the, so you can see how the chicken starts taking shape. And so this, I'm on a size two and a half, I think, yeah, two and a half. And, but the thing is, it's the same number of stitches. So even though you're using little yarn, it doesn't mean you have to do twice as many stitches because you want to get smaller. So it's the exact same pattern. So it's exactly the same number of stitches as this one. This is gauge, see what gauge does, fingering. Um, more of an errand weight. <laughs> Same number of stitches. That's what gauge is. <laughs> so anyways, so it's sort of fun to do something like this where you're doing it on little on little yarn, but it's not more knitting, so it goes just as fast. Um, so anyways, here's our little guy. He'll be done. He's almost done. He'll be done by next week, I think. So chicken mania. I will explain more when July gets here, but it started. So the class though for the chickens is July 13th. So it's July 13, 12 to 2, which means it's a Saturday from 12 to 2. Okay, so next up is a tutorial all about the short rows so that you can make your chickens and you know what you're doing. So this is German short rows. Um, short rows just means you're turning around the middle of the row and you're going back. 
and you could be going back and forth like this in the middle of the row, not touching any of the end stitches, and you end up with a, a curve like this. And so there's many ways you can use that curve and things like this. As you can see, I've got a curve like this down here. This is where I start where I barely knitted any and I knitted a whole bunch more down here. So that's why there's this curve here. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you how to do German short rows. If you see any pattern that says wrap and turn, you don't have to wrap and turn anymore. You'll just knit that wrap and turn stitch. You'll call it the turning stitch. So you would have to slip it if you're doing wrap and turn. You'll knit it if you're doing German short rows and then turn around and do the German short row thing. Much easier to, to keep track of. The whole process is easier and it looks better. So German short rows would pretty much turn everything into German short rows now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the tutorial, tu <laughs> the tutorial is next. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do a tutorial on German short rows. There have been many ways of doing short rows over the decades, and the most common one was called wrap and turn. I'm not gonna show you what it is, but you'll see it a lot at W N T, which is wrap and turn. So, um, but we pretty much do German short rows now. They're much easier. They look better and they're, they're just much easier to execute. But let's first, why do we do short rows to begin with? So we do short rows. Short rows means you're turning in the middle of the row, like you're going so many stitches into your row, and then you have to turn around and come back so many stitches. And the problem is when you turn around in the middle of a row, if you've ever done this by accident, you have a hole. And so the, the, you have to have a technique that helps fill up that hole with yarn so you don't see it. And so that's why we have wrap and turns or German short rows is because we're putting a little bit of extra yarn in that stitch so that when we turn around, we don't see that hole, the hole gets filled up. All right, so that's why that's why we do short rows and that's how why we have to do something besides just turn around and go back. There is a hole. Now, sometimes on garter, which I didn't try it on the chicken and I should, probably should on the rest of the chicken, um, Garter, you can actually get away often without having to do anything because it's more scrunchy because you have the bumps on both sides. That actually hides the hole pretty well. But um, yeah, but like the chicken, she did wrap and turns. And I, I haven't finished this other one, so I might try doing some turns without um, doing wrap, you know, German short rows and see if it's fine. Because if it is, that's even easier. But so what are short rows doing? So right now you are going to see, and this is why you really need to figure out how to do these because all the um, garment patterns are putting German short row or short rows in the uh, across the back of the neck. And the reason they're doing that is you're building up fabric so that the 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 back of your the back goes up over your neck a little bit. It fits better. Okay, if you look at most. Um, um, garments that are sewed, you'll notice it, it's a little, it's got a little bit of thickness in the back and it just pushes it up over your shoulder better. So um, knitting has started doing this. A lot of the designers have started doing this. So you are often seeing short rows on the back side for a few rows um, on, of garments. So it, you really need to sort of get this down and understand what's going on. So for the back of the, for the back of the neck, so let's say you have, that's the back of your neck. Okay, and here's the front of your neck. And so on the back, what you're gonna do, so the the short rows means I can go back and forth here in the middle, and that means I got a lot of fabric, but I'm not gonna have any here. So it's gonna make this sort of oval shape that's gonna happen. And, but it doesn't affect this count right in here, which is your whole shoulder thing and your sleeves. And so it doesn't change the count for that. And so what you're doing is you, you'll go with so many stitches, this way and then you're going to turn around and then you're going to go so many stitches this way which it'll match it'll be the same number you did from here like the center point to here the center point and then you're going to um, turn around and come back and now you're going to do a shorter row even than that and you're going to turn around come back turn around come back turn around come back turn around come back Turn around, come back. And then when you're done, you will do a, you will do this where you'll now knit all the way to here and then turn around and you'll knit all the way to here so that this is one continuous line. These, these all will fit like you're not having to do anything other than just knit the stitches um, to make it. And now, as you can see, there's a lot more fabric in the middle of this than there is at the two ends. That's what short rows are for. So that's the, for right now, that's the most, you're gonna see it mostly for that. 
Um, then you have other things that you might um, um, come across. Like, okay, so we got the chicken. The chicken has a ton of short rows in it because they're doing a bunch of shaping. And you can sort of see the shaping, um, like right here. So right here, that blue, see how we start sort of small and it gets fat? That's because of the short rows, okay? And there's short rows all of the the back tails are done with short rows. If you start here and then you go and you get each time you go a little bit shorter, which makes this fabric shorter and shorter and shorter. And I hope I'm getting it in frame. And um, so that's that. So um, so for the chicken on the breast of the chicken, um, the short rows are like this. So you 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 knit across the breast. And then you knit so many stitches in this way and turn around so many stitches back out. And then less stitches and then less or more. It could be opposite to you. You could go the opposite direction. But either way, we'll make the same thing. And so then you end up with something like that. And you do the same thing on the other side. And that's what happened with this. So you can see this shape that you, I got. That's all short rows. That's how you make that shape. Because, you know, if you're just knitting, you, you can only make squares and rectangles. <laughs> you can't really round it very well. So that's what short rowing does, is it makes different shapes also. And you can sort of see it pretty good here. And the one that's on my needles. So you can see the short rows. So I went this, so I went, let's see if I can put it down here. So I went this way. And then back, no wait, yeah, I went, yeah, so many in this way and back, so many in this way and back. And I kept doing it for a while. And then they had me do something else and sort of continued it. But that's how we got that. And that's how we got these. Again, you're knitting, you're knitting. Um, so I was knitting this first one I did. So I knit this way, came back, shorter, 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 came back. And then I was done. Okay, and then I still had all these stitches. And then I cast it on. Anyways, I had all these stitches here. So it's for shaping. And so it's for shaping over bodies or shaping different things that you need shaped. So here's how you do German short rows. Okay, so there's two ways that people approach this. So this is where you're going to be going out far and coming in all the time. Okay, so let's say it says to go, I don't, I think I have 20. 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 stitches, 13 stitches. So I'm going to knit out 10, 10 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now on many patterns, you'll if it's German short row, okay, so, so this is, how, I need a turning stitch. So when you had wrap and turn, you would knit 10, and then the next stitch, you would do this wrap and turn thing. So you sort of have to do the same thing. I still might need my 10 stitch, but then I need to do one more stitch to get my turning stitch, okay? So that's the 10. Here's my turning stitch, or my German short row stitch. Now I'm gonna turn it around. I have two stitches left. I'm just gonna turn it around. And now with German short rows, you turn it around. You always slip as to purl with yarn in front. No matter if you're knitting or purling on the, on the next stitches, it doesn't matter. You always have yarn in front and you're going to just slip the stitch over as to purl, okay? Then you're going to pull up on this until it makes what we call a double stitch. So you'll often say make double stitch or knit double stitch. So this is the double stitch. So what you've done is you pulled up the stitch below. This is the stitch below and you've just pulled it up so that it goes around the needle. And now I I'm gonna go ahead and knit, and I keep this pulled up because I need that there so I can do my double stitch or see it. And then if you'll notice right here, so see how this stitch looks like a double stitch, right? And you gotta be careful because you could knit it as two stitches and then you just totally blew, blew it. And so another trick, I'm gonna take this out and show you one more time this one. And one other thing I do is I, I will mark them often with pins. Okay. So I've, that's my, I've just knitted the turning stitch. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to put a marker in and it can be any kind of marker. It doesn't matter. Just small, not too big. Oops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> I'm going to put a marker in before I do the double stitch. 
okay? Because that way I know the double stitch is right before my marker. You could also do it after the marker. It depends on what you're doing to what you have to do. So it can go either before or after the marker, whichever works best for you. It doesn't really matter. It's just marking it. So here I slip my double stitch over, I pull, and I continue on. <clears throat> And that way I know now that for sure this is my double stitch and I don't incorrectly knit it as two stitches. So now I'm going to knit all the way to the end. This is what I did for the chicken. Maybe I won't knit it to the end. Let's knit, look, knit, I don't know how many stitches this is. I'm going to knit to two stitches to the end. Okay. So I've knitted back and I have these three stitches again. And this is going to be my double stitch. So that's how many stitches it told me to do, which would be... So that's my double stitch would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would have said knit seven, then create double stitch or turn work or wrap and turn or whatever it says. So you need to knit for German short rows, you need to knit your turning stitch and then turn your work around. Again, slipping with yarn in front, which it's already in front unless you let go of it. It's in front. You're gonna slip straight across as to purl. And then this time I'm gonna purl the row coming back so you can see what I have to do. So I'm pulling it up, but because I got a purl, I have to bring my yarn in front to purl. So you're doing that. So you're pulling this up, then make, bring your yarn just like you normally would into purl, and now you can purl back. And then let's say it, you end up stopping. So often when you're doing it this way, when you're building in between the double stitches, like there's my double stitch. So this is going to be my turning stitch, or it could be, this could have been my turning stitch. You've got to follow your pattern. It may go knit to two stitches before the turning stitch. So let's do that. Let's knit to two stitches before the turning stitch. So there's my double stitch right here. There's the two stitches. Now I've got to knit, I, I said to knit to two before because I still have to do a turning stitch. So I'm going to purl this, turn it around. Now my yarn is actually in back. So because it's going to be knitting. So I put my yarn in front slip as to purl, pull it up. Now, when you pull up after you've done a purl one, it doesn't pull up quite as neatly as all the other times, but it doesn't matter. It's still doing what it needs to do. And so let's say this one goes, says knit to two stitches before the turning stitch. And again, put in a marker. I don't have any markers with me. <laughs> so put in a marker and then knit to two stitches before the turning stitch. So there's one, there's two. Here's my double stitch. So I gotta knit these three. Okay, that's my double stitch right there. It's funky looking, you can see it. And then now um, I'm gonna knit my turning stitch. Is that what I did? No, I didn't. So this is my turning stitch, okay? So that's my turning stitch. Doesn't matter, just do your, I don't have a pattern, I'm just making this up. <laughs> Again, so, so yarn is in front, so put the yarn in front. I'm gonna knit, I'm gonna purl this row. So pull, put it forward to purl and then go. Now let's say this was our last one and it now says knit to the end. So that means now whenever, or purl to the end, I'm on purl row. Anytime you hit these double stitches, they count as one stitch, you're gonna knit it all together. As funky it is, but that's all the extra fabric, the extra yarn that's gonna fill up the hole that this would have created right here. Cause you can sort of see that that would sort of be a, that would sort of be a hole there. Okay, so this is gonna fill up that hole. So I'm knitting the whole thing. The double stitch is one stitch. Okay, and then I'm gonna, that's not a double stitch. Here's a double stitch. So I'm gonna purl, sorry, purl that stitch. And then the needle's gonna fall out and I can finish the row. And then you will most likely turn around and go back and finish the other side. So now I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna now knit the row all the way to the end. And I'm going to knit the double stitches. Sometimes it says resolve the stitch. The terminology is all over the map right now because it's not, it's a newer technique and people are, you know, doing it differently. So um, any of those things, that, anything it tells you to do with that double stitch, it's going to be knit or purl the double stitch. So here's my double stitch. So I'm going to knit it all as one. And I'm going to knit until I hit another double stitch. And here's my double stitch. And I'm going to knit that all as one. And I'm gonna finish to the end. I'm done with double stitches. And here we go. So here's the shape of my knitting. So it's no longer straight, it's got a dip in it because I knitted these stitches in here more. I only knitted these once. And then these another couple times, you know, but these in the middle, I knit like four different times, I knitted them. 
And so they make this kind of shape. Okay. And that's, that's German short rows and, and what double knitting, um, double knitting, what, um, short rowing is about. And another project that we have here in the store that you probably have seen or not seen. So this is the butterfly scarf. Hold on. Shawl. It's a shawl. The most, one of the most fun things I ever did, but challenging. I actually, I think I'm going to be doing this class, um, closer to the fall. Um, so, but you can see all of this, the yarn is doing the color work, but all those little bubble shapes is short rowing. It's all short rowing. Lots and lots of short rowing. And that's like that. You can make that beautiful. And then we also have, um, yeah, we have a couple things in the store that have short rows in them that are like the design is short row. I know one thing is right here are coasters. <laughs> So this to our felted coasters, see how they've got the bubble stitching. You can see this one better. See how that it's got this, that was done with short rows. So, and that's the design. So there's, you know, do, using design, there's a whole blanket made out of this stitch. It's called the lizard ridge. And there's a whole blanket made out of this. It's stunning. Um, but that's short rowing. All right. Using markers is a really good idea. This one I didn't really use and I, I'd have to get into a bigger project, but using markers, you have, you need to use markers. If you're doing a ton of things, like if you're doing stuff like this or stuff like this, you, you need to figure out the use of markers. And, and at first I would be putting markers all, at all my double stitches. Um, one, you can see them so you can keep track of them. Another one, what, what the most confusing thing is, is once you turn around, which, which direction am I going? It's easy to get lost in the direction. And so having different colored um, um, markers so that you always know which direction you're headed so um, is, is really a good idea. Um, but yeah, so markers, use markers to help you keep track of what's going on. And I can't give you a, because it depends on what's going on to how you will use the markers. So, um, but do use markers and figure that out because it really will, um, save you some heartache. Cause that is the most confusing part is I've turned around now, which way am I going? What am I doing? That kind of thing. So markers are the answer to that. Um, notes can be the answer to that. Um, yeah, so you just have to know that that's an issue and then really sort of pay attention and figure out ways to to track it for yourself. Like, how does this work and how can I track it that makes sense for me? Because it'll be different for different people. So that is German short rows and those are used in the chickens that um, the class is coming up in mid-July. So there you go. You'll learn German short rows and it's really good. This is one of the easier ones. I have to say this one is not so hard to track. Um, it, because of the way they've done it, it's really rather, relatively easy to keep, to keep this tracked and not get too, too messed up with it. Um, compared to something like this, people like this, where you just have bubbles and bubbles and yeah, those are harder to track. But the, the, the chicken isn't at near as hard to track. It's easy to track with some pins and, um, you'll be fine. So that's the tutorial for today. And that's it for this week, and I hope to see you in the studio real soon. Bye.